Okay. You know all. You know you all the scenes. Yo. <laughs> see what my camera look like let me see if i look okay to be there y'all ready are y'all ready we rock the douchey for real i look okay but they went all out for y'all looking real real good right now what is up it's your girl ej and it's tika douchey in the building you highest the highest chocolate you okay know listen you never know who's coming through the ruthless round table we see you doing your thing deputy gates the wonderful amazing Tyler Perry. the he air johnson y'all <laughs> are you doing <laughs> I'm doing, I'm doing good. I'm now, you know it ain't a party unless our boy Lenny show up. Please come on, son. At least you can do it. Now, without further ado, welcome to the Ruthless Roundtable, y'all. The number one spot for Ruthless Live recaps and conversations. Let's go. All right, all right, all right. What's good? What's good, everybody? It is your girl, Tika Deshaun of all things. What's this whole mother with the We got... The one and only Vacay JTV up in here, because y'all know it's the Vacay JTV party, right? Then, of course, I got my girl EJ, the number one stunner. <laughs> EJ, okay. what's good? What's good, Jay? What's good, EJ? Nothing. Chilling, ready. What up, though? How we doing? How we doing, fam? What's good? What's good? What's good? No, you didn't do that. <laughs> too much uh, BMF? Yo, okay. Yo, 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 too much BMF. What are you talking about? Cause that's, that's what I'll be doing. Good. Every time I look at BMF, I'll be like, what up, though? <laughs> Just yeah, that Detroit, Detroit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So want to go ahead and get started. Shout out to First on the Scene, Lemon Kush Pepper. Shout out to you. Uh, shout out to Latoya W. What up, fam? <laughs> uh, shout out to Breeze. Thank you for tapping in with us. We absolutely appreciate it. And you guys, for about nine, ten weeks, Tyler Perry's Ruthless has had us literally locked in on BET Plus. Um, and I'm I'm so sad, but not sad, but sad because it's coming to an end um, for now. We, we're definitely going to get season five. However, right at this moment, there's no more Ruthless to tap into other than the, re than the replays and the recaps. And so... Um, We'll go ahead and get started. What did you guys rate, rate, rate the episode? Uh, we'll start with EJ and then move on into the one and only Vay KJ. What did you rate the episode? Mute. Okay, one more time. Let me get hype again. I gave it a <laughs> 10, 10, 10, 10. Let's go. <laughs> and what about you, Jay? Ah, uh, I gave it a 9.8. That's what oh. I gave it. I gave it a 9.8. Anything over 9.5 is good, but I gave it a 9.8. And, and I'll tell you why. I gave, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Okay. All right. With that, you know, of course, your girl, the, the Rockadushi, the Ruthless Addict, of course, I gave it a 10. Like, it had me gasping. Like, what the heck? So, you know, it gave me a 10, and I was here for it all. Um, shout out to Cheryl D. Thomas, Karima. Um, uh, Cheryl D. Thomas gave it a 10. So thank you, thank you, thank you for your rating of Tyler Perry's Ruthless. Of course, this was episode 22. Um, again, just as I stated, the very last episode for Tyler Perry's Ruthless for the season. Um, but it went down. The standoff literally, y'all, went down. Um out of this collage of images, EJ, tell me what were your thoughts on the very first scene, which was the standoff where um, um, your boy George Lewis, I'm sorry, Lewis gave this big old speech. He said that, wait, I got the wrong. <laughs> he George. said this is exactly what he said. I had to write this thing down because George went in and I was happy. I was like, what? Get it, George. So it said, you all are effing fools for believing this ish. And you men, you men are letting him F you. Come hmm. on. He is not a leader. He won't lay his life down for none of y'all. You get all, oh God damn, I messed it up. <laughs> all of you are <laughs> your life down. Yes, all of you are laying your lives down for him. He is not the rock who, whatever that BS is. In a nutshell, y'all, y'all the freaking cult. Hmm. You're idiots. 
Wow. Talk to me about George and, and his whole everything. He just went in. <laughs> Listen, let me just say this and let me say it loudly and clearly because you know I'm loud. Um, Y'all know I love me some George and George is saying exactly what we've all been thinking this entire time that we've been watching this show. He just finally said it out loud to all the people because I ain't going to lie for all the time I've been looking at it. I just want to go through the TV and be like, y'all know y'all in a cult, right? All of y'all, like all of y'all that's doing the most. All the clapping, all the extra, y'all know that, right? And George just said it for me. So kudos to George. It's about time somebody say it. <laughs> about time. And right. do I need to go on with the other pictures as well or just that uh, one? Whichever you can pick. If you want to talk about another one, if not, we'll move on and let Jay rock uh do his thing. Listen, I got something to say about the other one too, because my finesse twin number one, my my first, my first love, Lewis, he was doing his thing too. I like how he just his voice changed and he was all about business. You know what I'm saying? And then your girl, she was being a little extra with her stuff, Bridget, but you know, she finally got to low-key say what she wanted to say. And Ruth was acting her behind off. She was acting like she was caught in the middle. And then your boy, the highest, he just looking like a fool. Like he just looking crazy. Like, I can't believe y'all did this. <sighs> okay. That's all I got. Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, because um, I like it when Lewis said uh, he sold the highest. He was like, do you want to mm -hmm. un be unalived? And highest like, the rock who will take us. So I'm like, well, do you want to be unalived or not? And okay. he had to answer the question. He was like, no, I don't. So, <laughs> Jay, what were your thoughts? Man, okay, so... George with his speech, absolutely, I agree with you, EJ. Yeah, it was about time somebody told everybody, like, y'all motherfuckers is crazy. Like, y'all dressed up in this purple thing, and y'all in these freaking trailers, and y'all ain't washing your ass right, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're crazy to be following this dude, and you know, I mean, I mean, we know he got a wig now, but we know, <laughs> you know, the highest ain't nothing. We know Tyro been nothing. He just got them all fooled. So I, I did appreciate that. And at the same time, you know, pretty much George saved his own ass from not getting cornholed by, you know, Daikon, you know what I'm saying? And then when Daikon pulled the strap, like, that was not fast, Daikon. He easily, George could have easily popped him as he's going to get the strap from this guy to go like this and <laughs> there's nothing in there. You know what I mean? So, I mean, George... Lewis, they really planned this thing out pretty good to be taking all the ammo out of there. So I was like, okay, these guys are very intricate with it. I loved it. Uh, and then Bridget, as we see Bridget, this is everything that she wanted to say to her after getting her ass beat, after getting whipped. Well, I've been one to pop you, da 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 Did you think there was any uh, bullets in that strap that she had? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not, maybe not, right? But that was all part of the plan anyway. But I think she just wanted to get what she said out to to Ruth, like you freaking me out, da, 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 right? Like curse her out. So I mean, this was if you are on the side of taking out Tyrone and the cult, then you are cheering for George and Lewis to really get the money, get up out of there, and break this whole thing up so people could be free of the BS of the Rockadushi campus. Absolutely, absolutely. Listen, I was here for it all from the speeches to the Bleak is getting pointed at everybody to Tyrone getting snatched up. Uh, <laughs> and just like you all both said, uh, uh, Bridget definitely said all the things she wanted to say to Ruth since the first day she and Ruth had their major encounter. So we're at the vehicle. Now, this was like, I was like, this like is foolishness to me because how can she just like now you on rush hour where you taking taking blinkies from out of people's hands, uh, referring to Ruth taking the blinky from Bridget. And so I was like, well, all right, then if that's how y'all want to do it. OK, I'm here for it. Let's go. Um, of course, we see everybody, you know, getting into position. Um, the highest is finally ushered into the vehicle. And, and as the people as everybody's leaving, it's OK, my children. It's OK, my children. I'm like, shut up. Like touched your highest but it was in character for the highest to show no fear even though he probably was scared out of his boots but to show no fear to you know to his his uh followers 
Um, any thoughts? Either we can start with Jay. Any thoughts on any particular slide in this particular any any scene in this particular slide? I mean, I thought it was a little funny, <laughs> you know, the whole <laughs> tactical move that Ruth did. Oh, hi, it's no. He's like, give me, give me the strap. He's, he's like, no, hi, it's I love you, I love you. And then Lewis is just like, give me that. I was like, <laughs> it was no struggle. It was, it was kind of like, ah. Eh. I mean, we know this was part of the plan, but it was part of the plan to show the highest that she wasn't really down with them, even though it was her whole entire plan, you know. Mm-hmm. So to see that happen and. All of that I was like, all right, okay, yeah, I'm gonna be okay, children. Don't worry. Yeah. I mean, I don't think he was scared. I think he was like, okay, y'all want to do this because we know how crazy Tyrone is. He's like, oh, you really want to do this? Okay, okay, okay. We're gonna see. The Rock who's gonna save me. That's what's gonna happen. I'm telling you right now. EJ, you may speak. <laughs> that part. That's exactly <laughs> what I was going to say. He certainly believed that the Rock Who would save him, you know, and not trying to put my track shoes on, as my girl Moochie say, but we know that that's the mentality that he was in when we get towards the end of it. Like, he literally believes that the Rock Who is going to save him, and he, right now he's thinking that Ruth is a down A-B. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's mm-hmm. exactly who he he like, dang, that girl, I put it on her, boy. When she taught me how to do that thing with that tongue, boy, I put it on her. <laughs> That's what he thinking. <laughs> right. And she says she would kill him for, for the highest. You know what I mean? Okay. So this is a, a good display of that. But again, it was all part of the plan anyway. You know, so. Absolutely. That's why. Yeah. I, well, anyway, we'll get to it. <clears throat> yep. But yeah. What's up, Lemon Kush Pepper? What's all up? right, y'all. So um, back <laughs> at the police station or the sheriff's department, we see that they have finally received the ability to or the capability to be able to go in they got their warrant but sheriff conley good old sheriff dirty old sheriff conley is there saying y'all don't need to go in not this way there's too much going on um there's going to be a lot of people unalive um then it's then he which was a smart thing he said get andrew let andrew know uh or have andrew come out here and explain it so andrew comes out and he says that there's um uh fire a lot of firepower on the rocket compound um there's booby traps out in the in the nature in the woods and everything so he broke the 411 down as to everything that was really going on he should have really been this up up forward um from the beginning forthcoming in the beginning but because he was already in his own situation he was like i'm not saying anything because y'all already are blaming me um anyone have any you know, any particular thoughts on this particular these any of these things or slides? <laughs> so y'all, okay, we good. Moving on. Who ran it? Who ran it? Listen, my girl Ruth came through with the speech. EJ, I know, I know you can give me that re- Ruth speech. Talk to me. Tell me what you tell me what you're thinking, what you're feeling. Yeah. But Ruth ran it. <laughs> I can't give you the exact speech, but I can, you know, I can ad lip that thing for you because Ruth was out here doing the most. Okay, I almost thought I was on board. Uh, she was out here doing the absolute most. And the way she got Daikon together, y'all, like, I'm sorry, that was too funny for me. He was like, who do you think you are? And she's just, and she just is, why is everybody believing Ruth at this point? Why? Why come the rest of them haven't put it together? Is it just me or am am I the only one that's wondering why River, Joan, like all the people who knows her game, why they haven't put it together? I don't understand y'all. Like I really don't. But uh, yeah, it was, it was, I love this scene. This was a pretty good scene. The way she got the women together, told them to go get them whatever they got to get, the forks, the spoons, the the knives, the, 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 what the, the shovels, all that yeah. stuff, go get it. And I was like, and she kept going, y'all, what y'all, was y'all not really thinking like, how, how far is she going to go with this? Because they like, they got the guns. I'm like, they got a point. They got the guns. What y'all finna do? Y'all really finna go out here with these doggone shovels and stuff to fight some guns? That's literally taking a knife to a gunfight. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, they they was definitely on a um hand to hand comeback type ish. But um uh Jay, your your girl uh, the mother Marva, she went into panic mode and was like, girl, the, the man he's gone, the highest is gone, they got the highest. And of course, 
Ruth had to stop the firecracker out of her. Talk to me about, <laughs> about Elder Mother and Ruth. They took the highest. Oh, my God. What are you going to do? <laughs> Shut your ass up. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, this was the moment for Ruth. All right. This was the moment that, that I think uh, uh, everybody was waiting for, for her to actually become exactly what she is. You know what I'm saying? Number one, this was her plan. But I don't think this was part of her plan. We know that she's the master at creating whatever situations that need to be created for her advantage and to get these people out of here, right? So when she became the Raku G.I. Jane, when she told the ladies to go get the curling irons and the, and the hot irons and the, you know, the curl, whatever, okay? <laughs> and it was like, lead us. We want you to lead us. He was like, nah, dog. I got to wait here. <laughs> but y'all go follow them in. You know what I'm saying? Like, just, just get on out of here. I'm trying to get everybody up out of here. And the fact that they were listening and she did put Daikon like, Daikon, why are you being a little bitch? Okay, so what? They're in a the car. Like, go on a road, cut down the trees, cut them off, let them go on foot, and then get them. Do whatever you got to do to get the highest back. What is wrong with you? You said you're going to be here for the highest. You said that's that you love the highest. So she basically called him out, and he had to comply. Be like, all right, you're right. I need to go with the men and run and go get them. Do whatever it takes. So when she did that, it was like, okay, yes, Ruth, yes, Ruth. But we know the ultimate goal was to get everybody off that damn campus. Yeah. So once again. Ruth doing her thing, coming up with everything that she needed to get him out of there. Yeah, absolutely. Like her plan is, I didn't, honestly, I didn't see that in the very, very beginning that this was going to be her plan. But the fact that she um, acted it out, she did her thing. Like I was a little bit empowered. I was like, okay, Ruth, we got a little strength up in here. Something that, you know, yeah, we see little bits of it, but this was definitely a moment um where Ruth I say Ruth could be highest number two if 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 it came push the shot because everybody was literally listening to her. Um again even Daikon had to stop like you said Jay stop and listen to her. So yeah I, I was like okay Ruth so well if you think we about it if you think about it like she is the wife to be so she had to step up once they took the took the highest away. So right she had to kind of fill the shoes of the image of to be that number two. You know what I mean? Because right. the number two, which is supposed to be Daikon, was super weak at that moment. Like, we, there's nothing for us to do. Yeah, there's something for you to do. Get your ass on the road, run after the eyes, though. <laughs> so she had to fill that seat because they were already looking at her as to be the wife, to be like the second in command. Like, you know, you've been closest to the highest and you have that male seed. <laughs> inside right. of you so your brain is better because you have the highest is male seat <laughs> right God. you know what I'm saying? so she had to step into that role and, and it was it was a good thing i i, I like what i saw you know yeah, yeah it was cool and i've always said too that um if this were to go on like i mean ruth really could run the run the compound if she really wanted to y'all she could be the cult leader she could yeah mm -hmm. yep 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 she and really, i would be <laughs> I will be following <laughs> like a fool, like Jacka, like uh, Lewis said. I will be following like a fool. So, yeah, Ruth definitely did her thing. Did her thing. Hold on, y'all. So, anyway, you guys, then we see where um, why she tell why she tells Zane to go get the paint, but then it, it started becoming apparent as to why she told her to uh get some paint. I I, I got it. She was just trying to get her. Out of the way, she told jo uh, Joan, make sure you let everybody know. Um, let Make sure you, the ladies are doing what I asked them to do. And then up walks um, mutilated Manny talking about there's no, that the tanks have been, basically they put sugar in the tanks of the ATV, which was actually the plan. Um, Daikon's men were going to go and take the ATVs. However, the ATVs had sugar in the tank. So she was like, damn it, chop a tree down. Block their way. Block the route. Block their path. Like, just do something. So, again, I, I was I was definitely here for this power, this new form of power that Ruth was displaying in this whole situation. Anybody uh, have any, any thoughts on the paint? <laughs> Or anything else in either of these scenes. Okay. AJ, you're muted. 
bad because I was really talking. My bad. I was just saying I just thought they were really dope scenes. I, I thought it was just fun to watch Ruth really work on the fly. Right. Right, right, right. Okay, cool. So moving right along, the truth is revealed and we find out, listen, <laughs> white man, we find out that these two, these two are talking in the cage. Everybody has left to go do their thing. These two talking in the cage, okay? He said, he let uh, Sheriff Connie know you've been messing around with girls under 21. Yes, the highest does lie. And of course, Sheriff Connie lets him know, well, you've been effing a man with a with a wig. So we find out that the highest been going to the to the to the later or the neighbor salon getting his wig glued on. Talk to me. That was so funny. That was like one of the funniest things. I was like, I can't believe this was a wig all this time. I really thought that that was his hair, y'all. I ain't gonna lie to you. The fact that it's a wig, but it just doesn't surprise me though. Like it, it's not like a super surprise, but at the same time, I was like, really, <laughs> Tyrone, really. But everything about Tyrone is fake. So I mean, down to his name. So it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. And then it's go time, y'all. You're not going to ask me what I think? You're not going to ask oh, me what I, I think? I'm waiting for you to talk. You just, just got in, over so. I'm, I'm, being, I'm being polite. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm following okay. the host. Yo, why your man got the so and no? Like, for real? <laughs> so so if we remember the conversation, again, the, the, the sheriff was getting at him about the cornhole and the pictures and all of this and that, right? And then he said, yeah, you was doing a guy with, with a freaking so in, right? With a wig. Why Andrew stopped on the wig? He's like, wait a minute, the wig? He's got a wig. Like, why was that the most important thing out of that whole conversation for you to be like, oh, he has a wig? No. Oh. Like, does he really have a, a uh, an affinity for the highest like that? Like, did he really enjoy it that much that he is tied to the highest? That was my question when he was like, oh, what's up with that wig? So, yeah, yeah, it was funny. I think Tyler Perry's trying to be funny at that point. He was trying to put in a little bit of comedy because I did laugh my ass off. Now that I know that he got a wig. I did. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think, uh, just like you said, Jay, I think Tyler Perry did this on purpose because everybody is talking about the highest wig. I'm like, it, you know what I mean? The audience is always talking about the wig of the highest, the wig of the highest. Why don't he comb his wig? Why don't he do this? Why don't, you know what I mean? So Tyler Perry was like, okay, I, I got y'all covered. Let's let's talk about the wig. <laughs> let's, yeah. let's break this wig situation down. So yeah, I will, I will definitely, definitely here for here for that. Definitely here for it. So back to it's go time, y'all. And when I say it's go time, everybody was it was time for everybody to get the heck off the Rock Douche compound. Um, John was informed or told by Ruth also to go find River. River was told to go find John. Um, the two ladies, Lacey and Zane. We're like, girl, get y'all ish together. Go put some, or uh, Ruth told them to put some civilian clothes on and get the heck out of Dodge. And then, of course, this particular person, this shocked me. Um, for Laura to basically run off the compound the way that she did, that shut me out because I was like, but if she's in cahoots with Joan, why is she not waiting on Joan? Um, anybody had any particular thoughts on this? On this particular end of these, you know, people getting ready to get dressed and get off the compound, and and John and her, uh, her, um, what is she always drinking? Her moonshine. Stay drunk. So, um, Jay, what were your thoughts on any of this that happened? Yeah, uh, this like was very elongated, yo. <laughs> Again, that's why I gave it a nine point whatever I said because I was like, dude. Just get out of there. Why y'all talking and talking and talking? You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. What are we going to do? Just leave. J just go. You know what I mean? So um, was does Laura know that her name is on that account? I don't think so at this point because she ain't know what to do. I mean, if her name was on the account and she knew about it, that Joan put the name on the account, then she probably would have went to Joan and said, hey, you know, we still got that account, right? Let's get up out of here because... I'm ready. So at this point, it, it tells me that she just put a name on the account and Laura doesn't know anything about it. So mm -hmm. they they honestly were there to actually be and, and get healed by the by the highest for that. You know what I mean? So again, remember she was running out of names too. Remember, right. remember Jones said that. I was running out of names, so I put my name on the account, and then I, and, you know, I put some other people's names on the account as well. That's what she told Ruth. So she just put her friend on the account, but I don't think Laura knew, you know. 
But I was ready for them to leave. Like, get up out of there. Let's go. Let's go. Stop talking. <laughs> There's nothing else to talk about. You know? Right. Right. I was like, get the hell heck on. Like, why? I mean, yeah, I understood. The conversation had to be had. I get it. I get it. Because they kind of, they knew the plan, but they didn't know the plan. So I guess they had to see where, because Ruth is technically their leader, um, to see where her thoughts were and how we're supposed to be moving. Girl, we catching the bus, we catching the truck, we catching the van, we beating feet. What's good? How we getting up out of here? So, um, yeah. EJ, any, any thoughts on any of the things that happened? No, I was with Jay. I just wanted them to leave already. Although I, you know, yeah, I just wanted them to leave already. I was just like, can we just move this on along and go before the, before the FBI come, before somebody make a U-turn? Like, let's just go, you know, right. like, let's get up out of here. And as far as Laura is concerned, I mean, honestly, I'm still on the fence with Laura. Like, I mean, it, she, maybe she don't know, or maybe she's a good actor, just like everybody else. I mean, they all going in the same direction after all. That part, so. that part. <laughs> okay. All right. So y'all, then we see the woman's army. Like, this is Ruth Squad. They all pull up. They got the brakes, the curling iron. What y'all say? The brakes, the curling iron. The, I said the curling the, irons, the hot combs. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they got it all. They brought it all. They definitely brought it all. Um, so I just wanted rake. to highlight them. I just wanted to highlight the uh, the women's army because this chick right here, she was giving me like, um, uh, like she belonged on the cult for real. Like she was down. She was ready. She was ready. So I was, I was definitely here for it. But Ruth, you know, she told him, uh, did y'all see which direction the men went? And of course, there's one in the uh, in the crowd. Oh yeah, they went that way. Okay, follow them then. Get get out my face. Follow them. <laughs> so yeah, I was I was I was I was here for the women's army. So we got to toast to the highest. Anybody? First of all, does anyone want to chime in on this lady's army? I mean, these are ladies I've never seen before. I mean, you know, shout out to, to the, yeah, <laughs> shout out to the to shorty with the red hair. You know what I'm saying? Like, where you get the dye from? Yes, that's a Raku dye. That's the new Raku look. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, right. it was part. cool. It was it was cool though. Like I said, you know, it's like Ruth coming into her command level. I thought it was pretty cool for her to kind of like, what do we do, Ruth? This is what you need to do because she's been instructing River. Joan and everybody else. So now you got a whole bunch of people that you're instructing of what to do. So as you said, EJ, right. we like seeing her do stuff on the fly. So I, I love that. Hola, hola. <laughs> uh, nautical moon, 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 nautical moon. I do not believe Joan has children that are on the compound. Yeah. Yeah, Joan is a good liar. So I honestly, when she told Tally that foolishness, I didn't believe it. I felt like she was telling Tally that just to get in good with Tally to see mm -hmm. whether or not Tally was trying to escape from the compound, which was her mission initially from Elder Mother Marvel and Elder Mother Agnes. That was her mission. Go see what Ruth as well as Tally are thinking. So, of course, like I said, she knew that um, Tally's child was an important thing to her. So she used that. She used that to try to get close to um, Tally. But y'all got some good memories. Yeah, y'all definitely have some good memories. <laughs> so moving right along. Again, I love this part. Toast to the highest. From y'all girl, Elder Mother Marvel. Please, Jay, take take this moment away. Tell, tell us about it. <laughs> Root, what's what the going on here, you know? Um, <laughs> what you drinking? You know, I got that brown stuff, you know, and uh, and uh what, what we're going to do? I mean, listen, hey, you know, give me some of that. No, no, no. You don't want none of this. <laughs> you don't want none of this brown stuff, you know. What we're going to do? Me, me don't know what we're going to do. I, I'm homeless. You know, what you want me to do? Sleep under the tunnel? You know, I'm, I'm homeless. What do we do? I don't know. I know. To the highest, we got to get the high. I want to do some action. It's like, well, your ass is drunk. You need to go back to your trail and get some rest, yo. Just go get some rest. Well, well, you know, when the highest comes, you're going to wake me up? Yeah, I'll wake you up. I'll wake you up. Okay. Okay. All right. What is it? All the night. All the day. We are living in the Raku way. <laughs> to the highest. <laughs> she was twisted. I've never seen the brown liquor before. Okay. I've never seen that one. They be coming up with stuff that we ain't seen. 
Did either of you have any empathy for the fact that elder mother don't have anywhere to go? Like nope. talking about how I kind of felt, I kind of felt for a second, for just a second, I kind of felt bad that, you know, she, she said she don't have anywhere to go. We know her family don't want her. So, you know, kind of for a second, I felt kind of bad. But at the end of the day, I thought about it. Elder mother has unalived more people or has done more punishing to anybody on that Rakadushi compound that we've seen that even the highest has done. So, you know, then, like I said, my empathy kind of went away and was like, girl, whatever, auntie, sister, auntie, grandma, whoever, whatever happened to you happens. Like, at this point, no empathy was had, again, for Elder Mother Marvel. So, <laughs> <laughs> she said it was water in that cup. <laughs> but the lie is, not. it definitely wasn't water. That's some special, special homebrew. That's some... Something with some weed, or she had the good stuff to make that. What is that? What is that? Toilet water? What you mean? It's water. <laughs> That's what it looked like. If you go and say it's water, <laughs> right? That part. That part. So, uh, moving right along. Are you with us? We see Daikon and the fellas in the woods, y'all. And there's mm-hmm. literally one soldier left that's actually still with them so far. And that happens to be Ben. Um, EJ, did you have any specific thoughts to see? I'm going to tell y'all, I thought that this was the moment that the uh, secrets or the agents, the FBI or whoever, were going to pull up on Daikon and this little crew. Uh, I was wrong. Um, so EJ, did you have any thoughts on, on this particular scene? Well, I was just... I was just shocked that it was still somebody that was down with them. But the fact that, cause Manny's with it. He's, he's, he's there with them. And I'm like, did they just leave Manny? Like what just happened? <laughs> like I couldn't figure it out. I was like, what just happened? Did they just leave Manny? Cause if I'm Manny, I'm like, both this y'all that when it got in the car, I'm with y'all. I'm about to jump in the car with y'all. Like how Manny's still there. I don't understand. So is Manny like, you know what I'm saying? Like we've been all been trying to figure out whose side Manny's really on. Did he just not get what was going on? Like, cause I would have squeezed in the middle. I ain't gonna lie. I, I would be. I'm gonna get in the back of this SUV over here. Right, cause Manny, Manny scumbag Manny was actually supposed to be guarding the highest trailer, so he was right there when the white. Rolls Royce rolled up in the whole nine. Why didn't he jump in? You know what I'm saying? Like, what did he get cold feet or whatever? So I'm with you on that. Like, why is he there with Tycon <laughs> when he was supposed to be down with with them dudes? But uh, you know, they they weren't giving him information, right? Mm-hmm. That's was why asking, I expect him to figure it out. I would have been right. like, I'm about to jump in the car with y'all. Nah, you, we know we know your boys a box of rocks. We we've known that for quite some time. So that's, that's why they didn't <laughs> give him the entire plan because they know if they gave him the entire plan, he would probably botch it up. So, yeah, yeah. Keep your ass over there. We out of here. <laughs> That's what they did. It was, stay right there. We'll come back for you. Oh, he's like, okay. They ain't coming back for him. <laughs> At all. Right, right, right. So, yeah. Um, I'm wondering why they didn't inform Ben, ben on this whole plan. Maybe he was too close to the highest, so they didn't want to, you know, pull him in. Um, but ben he is, got the Ben is an informant, right? And when I say informant, whatever the high is, remember they brought him in because they didn't have the instructions to the safe. Right. So Ben looked like he just all in with the Raku. You know what I'm saying? So I think they were picking people who were kind of on the fence or like, yo, I want to get out of here. I'm with you. But he don't look like that type that he was like, I want to get out of here too with you. I don't believe this crap. You know? Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So. It's the departure, y'all. It's the departure. It's time to go. It's time to see Is everybody. It? Finally, finally see everybody. Everybody get their little pavilion clothes on. Everybody walking off the Rockadushi compound. Your girl Lacey, I love all that hair on her head. Like she looked human, so to speak. I, I don't know if human's the right. She looked like she was happy at that moment. I'll say that because she had been tortured, tormented, like literally the almost the whole time that she had been on the Rockadushi compound. So they finally, you know, they finally um allow her to be like, okay, girl, we we got you. Put your jeans on, put your, you know, your shirt, your good shirt on. Let's go. Yeah. Um, and and the vein, the smile on Zane's face. I was just like, anyway, y'all take it. Anybody can take this over. I just love this moment 
between everybody trying to really realize and okay, it's time to go. Jay, you can go. EJ, you can go. Yeah, it was dope. You know, um, I, I love this scene. Like you said, the hair was definitely giving. That was one of my favorite parts. I love seeing Lacey finally look like it's about doggone time. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the kind of the feeling that you got from Lacey. And Zane is finally like, I can stop playing like I'm crazy. You know, like you you just saw this side of relief on them to the point where I don't think nobody asking the right questions. And I was, I, I wasn't shocked. I ain't gonna say I was shocked because they did say, I can't remember who it was. I think Zane said that she would, she was going to try to help, uh, what's it, Ruth? You know what I'm saying? Like she didn't want to leave her per se. I think that's who it was. Right. But okay. Lacey, Lacey was out. Lacey said, I'm going to holler at y'all. Forget this. Bye. <laughs> now, nah, but I love this for them. If it's real. I really right, do. right. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I love it again. I definitely loved it for them. Um, and you know, Ripper had his little camouflage pants on. He found, I don't know where he found him at because he told Joan he didn't have any, um, any, you know, regular clothes, any street clothes, but he found them from somewhere, put them on and they swear, she swears she's going to make sure that Ruth gets that other half or gets her portion of the money. And, um, what did they say there? There. Their, I'm gonna just say their Facebook usernames were gonna be Raku Win One and Raku Win Two. The, the T W O, not the number. Like what is what? Anyway, I loved it. I loved it. They they got our girl Ruth. They hopefully anyway. We know what's gonna happen next. While right? this was the longest scene that I think a lot of people who have been watching the shows, I've, I saw some responses from folks in my group. Shout out to the Facebook group. Uh, a lot of people was like, yo, I'm, I almost shed a tear because it felt like this was the end. Like, we ain't going to see them ever again together. So a lot of people kind of felt some type of way and they got a little bit emotional about it. You know, me, I was like, OK, cool. Yeah, Joan, you better send some money to Ruth, like you said. Right. And, you know, it was kind of elongated for a reason. Now, we are going to have a season five for those that have been asking. Right. We are going to have a season five. It's already been shot. We've already seen the behind the scenes for it. But my question is for you guys, for, for you and Tika and EJ, is that are we going to see Joan, Lacey, Zane again? I know we're going to see River, but are we going to see are, are we going to see Ruth? Are we going to see Ruth, too? Because now she out with, you know, we, we know where we're going. I don't know. That's that's been my whole thing. Like, what would be the I personally haven't seen the behind the scenes photos. I think maybe I've seen maybe like one. I think I don't know if I was dreaming or if I saw it where yeah. the highest is like in court or something that could be fake. I just don't know. I can't remember. But um, I, I don't know where you would go from here. Like, what purpose would it serve for Roof to come back? For one thing, what purpose would it serve for River to come back unless he figures out that Ruth is full of crap mm. and he doubling back? You know what I mean? Like, unless he figures that out. But honestly, I can't see Lacey coming back for nothing in the world. And I can't see Zane leaving Lacey. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. so I don't think we're going to see those two at all. And Laura, I think she realized that she bit off more than what she could choose. So I don't think we're going to see her at all. And if she need any, any, there's nothing there for her. The only person that she would, um, if she's in on the money is Joan and Joan is right there with her. Joan is not doubling back. We already know that Joan was ready to take the other money and go anyway. So she's not coming back. So why would they come back? I That's the part that baffles me. I don't know why. So I don't know. Yeah, the only way I see them coming back is if they actually get caught. Um, I do. I actually did see the the behind the scenes for season five. I kind of wish that I hadn't seen it because it kind of taints um my view of what season five is going to be. But since I did see it, I'll just say and I'll just say this. I feel like when Ruth left the Rockadushi compound, I feel like she's definitely going to come back to the compound. However, I think that that stash of money that she has, I believe in my mind, in my ruthless thinking, that she's actually taking that money over to 
Richard and Nancy's home. Um, there's a moment where we see in the oval, and I could be all the way wrong, but she goes to Nancy's home. Um, basically, she trying to get the money back that she placed in their home. So I'm thinking that the money that's in their home is this money that she has stolen from the Raku. Now, again, I could be absolutely wrong, and it could just be me in my mind trying to put Ruthless and the Oval together. Um, but I think that this is what's going to happen. And then she's going to come back to the compound, play it all off like she didn't have anything to do with anything. She didn't know anything about the money, so on and so forth. And, you know, she's going to have to play a role just all, all for the sake of trying to get her daughter back. Somebody um, brought up the fact when they were watching um, this, that when she did go to the car, when they first showed the car, the back of the car, the trunk, the trunk was open. Right now, I don't think Ruth would have left without knowing that she, the money was there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think she would have left. But then when she drove off, the trunk was closed. So some people said, well, did somebody steal the money? Because when they first show it, the trunk is open. And then when they show her driving off, you know, the trunk is closed. So what do y'all think? Do you think that somebody took the money? I don't think she would have yeah. left if somebody took the money. I don't think anybody took the money. I think that was just one of those things, you know, just one mm -hmm. of those little little things that happened. Uh, but I don't think anybody took the money. I think she has the money and she gone. But if that is the case, that would like that would explain why she might be back on the campus. Because like, there's still the one thing, y'all, because we gotta mm -hmm. think about this. I forgot about this. Mm -hmm. She don't really know where they at. So she still needs to find where they are at, which was the whole point of her playing along. But now and she's going to have to finesse the highest more than she has ever. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. But that's my thought process is that she probably does have to come back. I'm just thinking about it now as I'm talking through it. She don't know where the hotel at, and the only person that know where the hotel at is Tyrone, and she still don't have that information. She needed right. to get the money away. So, Tika, I like where your thoughts. If you saw that, that makes a lot of sense. A lot of people like to travel back to Nancy Nim House for some reason. So, <laughs> uh, that makes sense. You take the money back there, and then you come yeah. back and you play along. And then, right. you know, we'll talk about the little uh, monkey wrench in here in a second, I guess. Right. <laughs> Okay. All right, then. So that car that she was in was an El Dorado. And I was just thinking the reason why the trunk um, closed the way it did. El Dorado, that's that old, old classic cars. You know, the cars back then used to be like super, super heavy. The trunks used to be super, super heavy. So it was made out of a, a stronger type metal. I'll say that. And um, so I'm just thinking that, you know, it, it just closed. Just because it was heavy and the thing was moving. But again, Tika could be wrong. We'll find out on that part in season five. <laughs> so, <laughs> so then moving right along, again, I had to I had to picture the, the El Dorado. Just just because it was old, I just wanted to add that in there. Um, our girl beat feet off the rock and do she come down. So so uh ruthless. Okay, okay. So then then moving right along. Last, last thing, last couple of things, and then we're gonna be about this joint, y'all. We're gonna be about this joint. Um, here we go. Um, oops, sorry, y'all. Back to the day. Okay, so out in the woods, we see Cal as well as Desiree, and they're basically they're basically um waiting. They've been placed in position. So they're waiting to see what's going to happen. They see out in the woods, Tyrone, or, or at least get, trying to get a confirmation that Tyrone is actually out there um, in that Rolls Royce because they do see the Rolls Royce pull up. And in the midst of that, these clowns get out of the car. EJ, can you please talk to me, to us, about Finesse, Finesse Twins 1 and 2 um, messing up their own plan? Or Girl, really? Gladly, plan. gladly. I've been rocking with Finesse Twin 1 and 2 for a while. But let me tell you, this was probably the one time where I was split, and specifically Finesse Twin number 1. Finesse <laughs> Twin number 2, we still here. We still good because he still 
thinking logically, okay? We find out that, oh, okay, Ruth finessed us. Oh, well, we still got $300,000. Let's get the heck up out of here. Let's go. We need to go. He knows what go down on the compound. Like, everybody knows what go down on the compound. There is no way that I'm going to take my behind back up in this compound to get some dog on money that I didn't even know about in the beginning. How the hell are you going to miss some, some stuff you ain't even know about? <laughs> like, seriously, that don't even make good common sense and just because you find out about it common sense says you know what bump that because I don't even know if I can trust you the highest could be lying to you with a straight face but you is gonna take a chance there's no way I'm gonna take a chance and I thought that my finesse twin was smarter than that like I really did but it sounds like he is just being led by greed and money and the fact that somebody got over on him so he thinks you know what I'm saying because that's the only thing that it could be is ego there's nothing else that it could be because it doesn't make sense and George is right like let's go and then your girl Bridget she get I didn't care what happened to her she deserved that because y'all go snitch on my girl though like is that what we doing out here is we just snitching she couldn't wait to tell you know what i'm saying that's why i said now ruth is gonna have to really finesse because if she come back she gonna have to super finesse because now the highest is not gonna trust her and it ain't no twat 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 in the world that's gonna get him to trust her she gonna have to come with some game i mean it's some real game so that's my thoughts yeah yeah, she she's definitely gonna have to really think expeditiously. She's gonna have to think real fast, throw her feet once this all uh plays out. Um for once I was like, um, dang, Lewis, I mean George, you really should be or Lewis, you really should be listening to your girl Bridget right now. For once, she's saying something that is not not messy it's the truth like the highest looks craziest h e double l let's just get out of here um um just look at his vibe he looked evil and the highest did he definitely had that demented look on his face so um jay can you wrap it up and tell talk to us about when the highest the first hit which was to the skull of bridget but before we get no, to I'm all sorry. of that, to the, to the, um, I'm going to talk the... about my reaction to this whole yeah. scene from the beginning, because okay. number one, I know they stopped in the middle of nowhere for this scene to happen. But in the real world like setting, we would not be stopping in the middle of the jungle. We would have mm-hmm. been already out of town, out of state, in another, in a hotel, whatever. Whatever location, warehouse, whatever, tie his ass up, do what we need to do. So I know this was for the scene. Right. And yeah, just like just like you said, that greed, boy. And no man want to feel like he got played ever. OK, so when you say ego, you are absolutely correct. Your boy. <laughs> and the high the, the thing about it is it's not that he just got played. It's the fact that the highest was laughing at his ass. <laughs> That's what it was. That's really what got him riled up. You know what I mean? And then for him to be like, yo, he's, he is telling the truth because the highest, I mean, why would he lie? Why would he lie? You know what I'm saying? Like, you just got played by Ruth, boy. You got to love her, man. Got to love Ruth, right? And you right, man. That freaking chick, boy, Bridget, she's just mad. She's just bitter, mad because she got her ass beat, dragged all over the freaking thing. So she was just waiting for any moment to tell the highest what's going on. If she does go back, if he is brought back, she is going to finesse it just like she always does. She's going to be like, she's lying because here's the money. And she's going to be like, I made sure I got it away from these guys da, 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 because they wanted this amount. And I lied to them. And she would explain whatever, whatever way that she needs to explain to get back in the good graces with them. You know what I mean? Because why should the why should the highest even believe them? You know what I mean? They still they they kidnapping him and taking his three hundred thousand. So now let's get to this whole sharpshooter sniper thing. Right. Um. I'm still trying to figure out who it is, right? So only thing I can think of is the first thing I thought about was that's the reason why they showed the scene with Daikon and the dudes and and finding, you know, the guy in the uh, in the woods who did still have a strap on him. You know what I mean? So I'm thinking they finally caught up to him and they sniping off Bridget and whoever else, right? But then I'm like, what the heck happened to your boy? You know what I'm talking about? The agent that ate the sandwich and is in a bear trap. <laughs> Whatever. That's the super loose end. Right? Where's he at? 
All right, what's his name? You know what I'm talking about, right? Malcolm, Malcolm, where's Malcolm? I thought where's he was just Malcolm? in the trailer somewhere. That's what I thought he was. I ain't gonna lie. Where is Malcolm? Why did George stop the car in the middle of nowhere? So is it a, a possibility that it's Malcolm popping off? Because where's he at? We don't know. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So it could be him. It can't be a uh, agent because why would another agent shoot another agent down? Shot mm-hmm. Bridget and shot another agent. So it can't be an agent. Has to be somebody either down with the Raku or it got to be Malcolm. So yeah, Bridget's out of here. Peace. Get out of here, you freaking snitch. But then, <laughs> then dude, what's his name? What's his name, Tika? This guy right here, I, Ben. I, I, Not Ben. Frank. Was it Frank? Brett? Something like I don't that. Know. I, I forgot his name. I really did. My Why she call him over in the middle of freaking the shootout? Hey, come right. over here. Right. Hey. That's what I did not understand. What's up, pal? You got a good shot there, too, man. I can see. <laughs> you got a really good <laughs> shot. So, you know, it's like it kind of it kind of left a lot of loose ends for me. That's why I didn't give it a 10, because I was like, okay, what you're not gonna spend the block on Malcolm. You know what I mean? Like, okay, we can only guess. So I get I get it. It's the cliffhanger. Oh, I like that effect. That's dope. <laughs> I like that. I like that. So yeah, I mean, the highest he crazy, man. Like Bridget, she was right. She was like, don't look at him. Don't look at me. <laughs> Cause he was like putting his little rock cool spell on her ass. He's like, this is not gonna end well. Pow! And she gone. I was like, right. Man, did the rock who do that? Okay, <laughs> I stopped believing. He showed thinking, Jay. He he definitely thinking. You see it all in his yeah. face. He like when he saw that shot, he like looking at them like, mm-hmm, told y'all. Yeah. The and then looking, not even move. Yo, he not even moving. EJ Tika, he like standing up while the sharpshooter is, is sharpened. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Can't yeah. scared. Yo, yeah, crazy man. dog, crazy. It's just, literally, he reminds me of um. I don't know if anybody used to watch the uh, World Wrestler WWE Psycho Kid. Like he reminds <laughs> me of somebody that freaking crazy. Nothing affects them, no matter what. Yeah. Um, let's let let me go to a couple of these comments while I can, y'all. I'll try to make it quick. Um, first of all, let me let me before I go to these comments, I just want to say thank you to the um to the the fans, the the audience. I mean, thank y'all for rocking with us all Ooh. what nine ten weeks that we've been doing this ruthless roundtable. Um, just about each and every one of you show up with us for us. Um. Every time that we do this ruthless roundtable, so I just absolutely, from me, from Tika, I absolutely appreciate you guys um, for coming here and just just rocking with us. Um, let's see, does anyone think there's a chance that the new hotel where the children are can be in Detroit? That's a long way, but how far right. is Detroit from Virginia? You never know. Bruh. <laughs> I don't think they're going that far. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's a cold ass environment. I, but why Detroit though? Why why that? Why would you say really? that that city? What 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 sparks uh the the curiosity and, and and how did you come to think of Detroit? Did you think about BMF? I don't right. know. <laughs> right. Just giving it a city. That's a that's that's uh, an interesting one though. I think the guy in the in te- no, I can't I don't know what y'all trying to say. I'm sorry. Um, let's see, let's see. Anyway, I'm trying to scroll down, get one or two more comments. Um, do you think wait, I thought the highest said the hotel was in Atlanta. ATL could be maybe. maybe. I've never heard him say that, but that's that's interesting. The Rock Who sharing off there is definitely powerful. Um, <laughs> let's see. Do you think the highest could see who I absolutely think he knew that something was coming? That fool ain't psychic. <laughs> the highest is not in no shape, form, or fashion psychic at all. In his mind, he may want to be, but no, nah, I think he he saw something. And I haven't made came to my conclusion yet as to who I think it is. I'm more leaning towards it being Daikon. Um, but hmm, we we I think we, I think he really just wanted to like you know, kind of put like a little thought in their mind and plant in their mind, yo, what you're doing is wrong. And because you did this to me, the rock who's going to get you somehow, some way. So I think he was just in that mode of just being overconfident and trying to plant doubt in their head because he already planted in their head that they got freaking swindled by Ruth. You know what I mean? 
So I think he was just being in his Tyrone Raku lowest self to (laughs) kind of be like, something bad is going to happen to you. I told you, didn't I? This is not going to be good. (laughs) Like, you know, he's just being evil. (laughs) Yeah. Yep. Doing what the highest does, y'all. Anyway, you guys, that was literally the end of the episode from Tyler Perry's Ruthless. It was definitely, a lot of the scenes were definitely drawn out. And I was just like, get your exes off the compound. Like, while you have the opportunity, just go. Like, quit with the conversation. Stop with the dialogue. But again, um, just as you said, somebody mentioned in your group, Jay, that it felt like it was final. Like, it was literally a final episode. Like, no more Ruthless and whatever happened to them afterwards. Y'all just, it'll be left to your, you know, your own, um, your own thought process to figure it out. But Again, we do know season five is coming back. All right. So with that being said, EJ, talk to the people. Do you have any last thoughts and what's coming up on your channel? Yes. So first and foremost, it's always, you know, it's always great hanging out with my sister, my brother. I appreciate you, Jay, for having me on this Ruthless Roundtable. It's always fun. I cannot wait to come back and do this for season five because I already know I'm coming back. So I didn't even have to be asked about that. But anyway. But anyway, no, seriously, this uh, season was actually pretty good. It kind of went by fast for me. It felt like it went by really quickly. I feel like we're at the end. Uh, I know that when I did my review, I was kind of at a loss for words, y'all. I literally, and I don't lose words very often, uh, but it really felt so final. It felt like this was the end. It felt like there, like there wasn't anywhere else to go. That's why I was kind of talking myself through it as we were doing this when I was trying to figure out, like, wh- where do we really go from here? Uh, but now that I have a few thoughts, maybe not as final, but I don't think we're going to see a lot of these characters. So, um, you know, that is kind of saddening. As crazy as this show is, it brings you back time and time again because of all of the stuff that goes down on the compound. As much as you want to see them win and get off the compound, at the same time, you don't want the compound to go away because then what what's left you know what i'm saying so uh it was bittersweet but like most people said it did feel so final but i i love this season this was a really good season i thought this was actually um probably yeah i was feeling this half a little bit more you know it had its ups and downs but i feel like this was one of the seasons that we got a lot of comedy we got a lot of relief from a lot of stuff that happens on the compound and i thought that that was dope and i love these characters that they brought in george and lewis they've been my favorite characters to watch and i shoot honestly i just don't know what's going to happen to them i'm really interested to see how it's going to play out for them but y'all know i'm gonna be rocking with them regardless so you know there's that even Lewis, I was stupid self. You know, I still love you, but that shit was dumb. Sorry. But anyway, thank you, Tika. Uh, as far as my channel is concerned, um, got a couple of things coming up. Of course, we have movie night with the ladies next week. I don't really know what that movie is going to be just yet. Tika and I and Tamika will be talking about Diara on Sunday. Uh, on Monday, the ladies and I will be doing BMF. I'll do my own review for BMF as well. And then... You know, just keep your notifications on. And that's it. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is always, always fun. Always fun. Um, I'm going to go before Jay because Jay actually um, created this whole um, Ruthless Roundtable. So I, I don't have a whole lot going on on the channel at the moment. I got two channels I'm working on. Um, but definitely, definitely ready for Diara from Detroit. And definitely doing... Uh, the Dirty D on my channel, then on Ruthless, on the Tika's Wind Down channel, I'll be doing, I'm definitely doing another Sip and Pay, as well as, um, I'm gonna have someone that will come on uh, live with me, and we'll just chat a little bit about grieving and the whole process. With that being said, um, shout out to the man himself, VKJTV, who, again, like I stated in the beginning, put this whole Ruthless Roundtable situation together he brought me and my sister ej the tv chunky together so for that jay i just want to say thank you thank you thank you so much um for giving me a space to talk about ruthless with other people that actually watch the show um with that jay what's up next for vkj tv and your last and final thoughts on the episode for the season <laughs> okay clap. <laughs> I just want to thank everybody for coming through. Um, I want to thank and give a round of applause to 
Tika Deshaun, All Things Ruthless, EJ the TV Junker for doing an amazing job as far as hosting the episodes when they host it because we always have fun. We're always creative. I love the fact that we come together. I mean, we're family. We're family. You know what I mean? So, you know, nothing's going to be separating us. You know what I'm saying? Like always me and EJ always go at it, which I love. You know, that's my sister from another mister. You know what I'm saying? And Tika's always on point, you know, with the rock cool, you know, mindset and everything. It's just it's just a great combination. So if you definitely enjoying this Ruthless Roundtable, definitely show us some love. Definitely hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed, do so. Uh, but because we're going to keep we're going to keep bringing it to you. As long as Ruthless is here, we're going to keep bringing it to you. I'm looking forward to season five um this season 4b was better than 4a in my eyes all right there was some things in 4a and, and, and ej you mentioned it 4b was more action more dragging more you know uh licking and eating and biting and fighting and, you know what i'm saying it was a whole lot more action so i definitely enjoyed season four and we may you know Depending on the schedules, we may do a wrap up or maybe a battle royale. We'll see. We'll talk about it and see what we want to do. OK, so look out for that. But thank you guys for subscribing, hanging with us all this time. Our second and third, what Tika and EJ said, you know, you guys been rocking with us. Thank you for watching the recaps, family. Thank you to all my Rockadushi fan for watching the recaps like y'all be showing out. And I appreciate y'all for real. So as long as Ruthless is here, we're going to keep bringing it to you now. What's coming up next? We're talking about BMF, all right? So we already did the final prediction, so check that out. We already got some exclusive picks, so check that out. See what your predictions are. And then, uh, yeah, we're going to be checking out BMF, and I'll be hosting this Saturday the recap live discussion for BMF Episode 7. This should be really good, so look out for that. Definitely make sure you tune in for that. Sunday, we're doing Diara from... Detroit. I'm doing that with Ashley from My Sweet Perspective. So definitely check that out and make sure you check out everybody that's covering that show because it's a good show. If y'all not checking it out, make sure you check out the hour from Detroit. It's a good show for real, for real. And then we'll be back on Monday for more exclusive picks for episode eight of BMF. And then we're going to be getting ready, family. Definitely getting ready. If you love the shy, the shy is coming back in May. So get ready for that. And then right after that, we'll be getting ready and set up for power book two ghosts all right in june so it's just back-to-back -back shows coming make sure you stay tuned make sure you share this out family if you love and ruthless share this out and absolutely keep showing us love we're going to keep bringing it to you the best way possible so thank you to all thank you tika ej let's keep this thing going as I always say you know what i mean all right back to you all tika right. all right y'all all right y'all that's it we absolutely again appreciate you all for coming through Tapping in, rocking with us, as you already know. And your girl, Tika Deshaun, always says, stay ruthless. <laughs> Slow. Start with you, gal. What was your first reaction? They Two out of 26, Elder yeah. Mother is the MVP. <laughs> Mother is out of her mind when she was like, Woo! <laughs> <laughs> hilarious to me. At this point, I think everything was, yeah, I was good. With the building. Shout out to Bajalin. She's in the building. All right, here we go. And she's like, Hey, Zane, we got to prepare. She's like, Yes, I'm ready. And then she gets on my nerve. I'm gonna guard your eyes out. She's like, Oh, because you stop doing this right here. You out here bowing to this ninja <laughs> like this. Why is you? Why is you doing? Oh, God, he's a high. Oh, God. Oh, 